Good afternoon, everyone. A uh, good morning. Uh, it ain't afternoon. Yet it's like ten forty, but I guess it is good afternoon. You know, and as always, no matter what's going on in your life, place your cross on first. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Be careful who you let in. There are some people in your life that are designed to destroy you, to stop you from doing what God wants you to do. And the Bible talks about this. He said they are cursed children. They've been lying since birth. They were born for this purpose. And I, I hate to say that, but some people are just pure evil. <laughs> you know, it's, I'm talking about we all got a little sin in us. But there are some people that are just pure evil. Their job description is to sow discord. That's what they do. Now, I'm not saying they can't be changed because we all can. If we accept Jesus Christ in our life and accept his will for our lives, we can live a life that God promised to us, that he promised to everybody that love him. You understand? But there are people out there. That's why this day and age, you really need discernment, people. I've been talking about this a lot lately because I experience it and I go through it myself and I just want to let y'all know what I know. There are people in your life that, that are smile, laugh with you, joy with you, and they mean you so ill will. <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell y'all a secret that I done learned that over the years. Everybody that smile in your face ain't your friend. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you figured it out too. And everybody that look mad at you, don't hate you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why you got to test the spirits. You know, you all watch movies and they'll, they'll show this neighbor, right? He looks like Freddy Krueger. <laughs> Let me use a, a movie, The Sandlot. They use The Sandlot. Everybody shunned away from this man. They, everybody got a bad vibe about him, so that was it. But coming to find out, they got to know him. He was actually a good person. You understand? That's why you got to get to know people. You can't just be fooled by a smile and confused because they're unapproachable. Let me tell you something, people. I'm gonna, can I tell you a secret that I learned? I'm going to tell especially for men. Strong men. You are not designed to be the, the life of the party. The people that want to draw to you as far as how fun you are and this and that. A man got to have a kind of boldness about him. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, you don't want people to come to your, like, let's say you got kids, right? You don't want your uh, your kids' friends to come by like, your daddy's just the coolest daddy on the planet. I'm just being real. No, you don't want that. You want them to be like, your daddy is no one to be messed with. <laughs> you understand? I just want to throw that out there. But be careful, people. People are trying to destroy your house, destroy your purpose. And a lot of them, mm -hmm. All they're going to do is help you. Now, think about this, though. I'm not telling you to run from them. God says, sit down at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. God's going to use a lot of these people as stepping stones. You're going to step your way right on their head, like Mario. You're going to get the star, and you're going to run through all of them with no, not a scratch on you. A thousand will fall at your side, but it will not come you near you. Only with your eyes will you see the reward of the wicked. I didn't see it. God said it. Mm -hmm. So guess what? God will reveal your enemies to you. If you're willing to look, willing to pay attention, willing to use your discernment that he has given you. You know, most people think Christians are supposed to walk around trusting everybody. Lie straight from the depths of hell. God said, place not your trust in man. Right? You don't go around trusting. You trust, go around trusting God. You understand? One thing I learned over the years is not who you trust. It's letting God let you know when you can trust who. Does that make sense? Because the person you trust today, you may can't trust tomorrow. You see, that's why I don't believe in the term friends. I use that loosely. You know, I'm going to tell you something I found out <laughs> as being a Christian. I don't have many friends. You don't either. I'm just being real. You don't, you don't got to believe me. You ain't got that many friends. I know you're trying to read, quote songs. 
In order to have friends, you must show yourself friendly. All right. Let me put it this way. I'm not finna be friendly all the time. For what? I'm just being real. Everything don't involve being friendly. Do you understand? Don't take that, take that with a grain of salt. You know. The Bible said be not friendship with the world. Now, the thing is, you're not gonna leave the world. But it'll be company. You gotta be careful who you let in. You understand? I done been through so many hard times, and the thing is, the thing, thing is, God will reveal to you who your enemies are. But this is the tough part about it. He'll reveal them to you. He still don't want you to treat them like trash. Still don't want you to reward them evil for evil. He just wants you to see. Look, I told you. Trust me. I told you. I'm not people. I, I told you. I told you to stop telling everybody everything. I told you. But don't worry about it. I got you. You see it now. You see it. You see it now. You know, God is the in a in the business of revealing things to you. Not everything. Not everything. You don't need to know everything. You don't need to know everything. God knows. You don't need to know everything. You know, that's one thing about, I was going to say something else, but I'm going to change my mind on it. People. <laughs> Some people, they just like that. You understand? They want to know everything. I'm going to tell you some people. I've been to jail one time in my life. One time in my life, right? And it was because of my willingness to want to know. <laughs> Guess what I wanted to know? I wanted to know if my wife was committing adultery. Mm. Well, I actually found out she was. I let that slide the first time. Found out again, like, okay, forgiveness. I'm reading the Bible, forgive her, forgive her. Y'all think I like the last part of the story. But the last time I was revealed to it and I saw it and I snapped and I put my hands on her. Guilty as sin. Mm. You know, I put my hand on her. I went to jail for two days and a night and, and um, it was horrible. I was like, uh, I hate this place. I hate this. You know, and it was all about my willingness to know. I have a new prayer technique that I use. Lord Jesus, you ain't got to reveal nothing to me. Just fix the problem. However you want to fix it. I don't want to know everything. I tell people that all the time. You don't want to know necessarily what your enemies are up to. There's no God that's up to something bigger than your enemy is. Mm -hmm. You only got to find out every word spoken against you. Mm -hmm. Why? For a number of reasons. One reason. The Bible says we all have spoken evil against somebody in our own hearts. So, inwardly, we have cursed other people. So, you don't really want to know. He said, don't take heed to every evil word spoken against you. Let it roll off your back. It's hard if you're married now. I ain't going to lie to you. Husband and wife, we say the most horrible things to each other. They won't say nothing like that to nobody else but our husband and our wife. And that's a great mystery. But I speak in regard to Christ and the church. <laughs> I don't know where that comes from. It's a great mystery that husband and wife argue so much. But to think about it, if you go back to the beginning, the devil has been trying to destroy the sanctity of marriage since the beginning. That's why people have so many marital problems. And I think the thing is the majority of us do. And if you fight through it, you might be up there in the pulpit or you might be in the church 30 years from now giving a testimony of how long y'all been together, but y'all done been through hell and high water, but y'all made it because you stood your, stood your ground. But that's what the enemy comes in, to try to destroy what God has. Like I'm working on my second marriage and it looks like it's on the verge of destruction right now, but it's okay. You gotta learn to let bygones be bygones and let things just happen the way they happen. Because one thing you never will know is what's going on in another person's head or what battles they are facing. And the thing is, sometimes people won't know what's going on in your head and what battles you are facing. You understand? We can't look at everybody like, oh, all they do is this. Well, you don't know what they're going through. Mm -hmm. If they had Jesus, they wouldn't be doing that. Man, if you don't go on somewhere with that, you understand? That's what people want to say all the time. You wouldn't need that if you had Jesus. Well, the Bible says, if somebody's weird, give them wine to drink. So uh, I'm going with the Bible on this. Maybe I need a drink right now. Maybe you need one. Maybe why you're so uptight? Because you don't listen to scripture. You're too busy trying to judge everybody. Like majority of us are. We love to judge everybody. Every time we see somebody doing something that we don't do. Oh, no. Jesus must not be in them. Whatever. You know, Jesus is in 
all of us in some form of fashion. The God is in all of us some form of fashion because we all know good from evil. It's up to, are you going to do good? Are you going to do evil? Because we're not saved through our own righteousness. I was reading Ezekiel. He was talking about how don't say if you're delivered that your own righteousness has saved you. All right. So it ain't about your righteousness. Yeah, we're supposed to be righteous, but that's not what saves you. God saves you. Your righteousness don't do nothing. Faith without works is dead. Yes, yeah, true. But Christ saves you. Your works don't save you. <laughs> you understand? They play a huge part. But Christ saves. Jesus saves. God saves. Mm. Not of your own righteousness unless you don't want to become one of those boastful people. You understand? But again, back to the subject at hand. Be careful. The devil walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. You see, growing up, I used to have a lot. No, I never had a lot of friends. I had a few people I acquaintances like at school. But my mom was real strict. She didn't really like me to go nowhere. So from a youth, I, I had one close friend. You know, I like the rest of the people I went to school with, that was just school friends. But as far as life, I had one friend and we were real close and we fell apart. It happened, it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? But he was very important during my time period in life and growth. And the thing is, as I got older, I, I tried to invite more friends in. And it's, it's crazy, man. And God, when God opened my eyes, he revealed so many to me, like, they ain't your friends. The first thing God did for me, that I didn't realize he did, was he took a lot of things from me, like habits. Smoking, alcohol, marijuana use. He took a lot of this from me. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. You know, God is so good. He can just take stuff from you without you even going to a, a psychiatrist or going to a crazy house. He just, uh, just takes stuff from me. All right. So guess what happened after he took that stuff from me? I saw friends just start dropping off the map. I'm like, wow. I guess I didn't have no friends. Because it seemed like all these friends were just coming around because of what I had. If I didn't have none of this. They ain't want to, like I tried to go around them and have a regular conversation with them after I found God and they was like, oh, I'm like, I don't care if you drink still, man, I even buy you something. You know, and that's just how I was, you know what I'm saying? But it's like the conversation was dead. It's like, like I can feel that they felt he caught on to us using him. And that was a horrible feeling. Because you would think you'll go through life thinking you got so many people that love you and care for you. And God's like, hmm, you really think so? Mm hmm Pay attention now. Pay attention. I'm so I'm not saying people, some people don't love you. I'm saying the majority don't. And nobody don't want to talk about this. Mm. Have you been to churches lately? <laughs> the biggest gossip capital of the world. They hate everybody in there. The majority of them do. <laughs> I'm just being real. But they are, hey sister, they get them, them fake pat on the back hoods. That ain't a real hood. They don't even want to touch you. But <laughs> I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry. I want to tell you what I see. You understand? Now, I've been to some good churches, but that's where discernment comes into play. But good people, I believe good people are everywhere. But the thing is, I don't even like to use that kind of, that term, term too much because the Bible says none is good but God. So I can't even go off there. There's some good people in the world. Well, not good as God. So if you try to compare yourself to God, you're not good at all, period. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you might be righteous, but you're not good. Mm. And the thing is, when you think like that, that you yourself is not perfect. You yourself don't do everything you're supposed to do. You'll stop looking at other people in a horrible way. You understand? You'll stop looking at people like, you know, you know them looks people give each other. You'll be careful how you judge. Why? The Bible didn't say we can't judge. But the Bible said, be careful how you judge. Because what measure you judge, it will be measured to you. Mm. A lot of y'all Christians need to wake up and realize that. While you're up there pointing the finger at everybody else's flaws, your flaws are going to hit you right in the face. And God's going to expose you for the whole world to see you. You'll be like, oh, I thought he was a good person. Great. But the thing is, people... Nobody can truly tarnish your character. Mm. If you know and deep in your heart with God mm, that you're doing the majority of the right things, mm, 
Let people talk. Let them talk. Let them tarnish your name. Because that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to destroy your credibility. And I can tell. I can look back at my life since I've been a Christian. The devil has been trying to destroy my credibility for a long time. And that goes with any believer. He's going to try to destroy you. He's going to make you seem like you're something that you're not. I'm talking about in a bad way. You see, the devil don't want to show your goodness. You want to bring up every time you raise your voice every once in a while. You're supposed to be a Christian, huh? A Christian don't supposed to get mad. No, they said the Bible said a, a Christian is supposed to be angry and not sin. You talking crazy to me institutes me sometimes to talk crazy to you. And then does that mean I'm not a Christian? I'm going to do you like Paul did. May the Lord smite thee. You white at wall, you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you, you can't just talk to Christians any kind of way. And think you're going to get away with it. One thing God gave us is a mouth and a tongue. He said the, the, the powerful two-edged sword, that more powerful. That tongue of yours is powerful. You understand? So, Christians are not the time to be pushovers. You know, sometimes God works through us. Sometimes we can be praying for God to deliver us from an enemy. And then God's like, what you gonna do? I done told you what to do. What you gonna do? You want me to do it for you? No, I want you to, I don't want you to be a coward. I want you to say something sometime. And then let me deal with the consequences of what you said. You know, think about the prophets. Hey, tell you, tell them what I told you to tell them what I told you to tell them. Prophets. And they went over there. And they said everything that nobody wanted to hear. They wanted to stone them. They killed some of them. You know, just because they opened their mouth. People think a Christian is supposed to just be a pushover. Nah. If you hate evil, sometimes evil will get on your nerves. If you start hating what God hates, it's going to start getting on your nerves sometimes. I'm like, good Lord have mercy. You're going to let it slide. You're going to be slow to anger. Like, I let it slide for the 12th time. You know, like anybody who is in a marriage or in a relationship, you know this work, this happens. You you let so many stuff. Oh, let's put it this way: How many of y'all got kids? And the kids will upset you so many times. And you're like, nah, I ain't gonna say nothing this time. You slow the anger. Let it slide. They might get better. A month pass. They still doing the same thing. Then the, the spirit of the Lord come upon you, <laughs> and you open your mouth. Mm -hmm. No, you don't think it works that way. Soon for Samson, the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he took a jawbone of the ass and he said, heaps upon heaps with the jawbone of the ass. Have I slowed my enemies? Lord, you finna let me die from thirst now? I'm thirsting in the mug, Lord. Give me some water. Put some water in the jawbone after he didn't slaughter the Lord's enemies for him. Huh. Don't think God can't use you to slice and dice. <laughs> I believe he still do it. If God never changes, I believe he still do it. I'm just being real. That he use righteous people to execute judgment on wicked. It is what it is. And it goes both ways. Sometimes wicked people do things to righteous people. Where I got that from? Proverbs, Arcadian, or Ecclesiastes, one of them. But be careful. But don't think that because you're a Christian. Because people look, blessed be the peacemakers. All right, all right. How do you bring peace? With the truth. All right, then. That's all I'm gonna say. Sometimes the truth hurts. Sometimes the truth hurts. You know, and people just be careful out there, man. You know, I try to do videos as often as I can every time God put it on my mind to do so, because somebody might need to hear what I'm saying. But I'm just saying, don't do friends. I'm just. That's not what the world says. That's why I say it even more. The world says you got to have a lot of friends. But the Bible said there's a friend that stands close to the brother. I think about that. You might be close to your brother, but your brother ain't around with you all the time. One thing about it, they're going to grow up and get kids. One thing about your other, your friends, they can't be around you. They can't help you every time. Your supposed friends, they can't be there every time. They're not going to be there every time. They got things they got going on. You understand? It's in their lives. They focus on it. They're not going to be with you all the time. You understand? But you know who's going to be with you all the time? The Holy Spirit. Jesus. If you want them to be around you all the time. 
Let's remember when you're doing wickedness, he is not there. He has left the building. <laughs> Let's remember that. So in order to keep God around all the time, you might want to do better things. You might want to do righteous actions. You know, because when you start living in unrighteousness, God starts dissing himself from you. Uh, but you, you as a, a hardened Christian, you're going to start thinking, oh, well, maybe God is okay with what I'm doing. Because nothing's happening. No punishment. You know? Everything's going pretty well. Let me tell you something. A lot of punishments ain't going to come upon your head and consequences are not going to come upon your head in this earth. Some of them are going to follow you to the afterlife. And you're going to be in a place that you'll be like, oh, Lord, have mercy. I never did. I thought I got away with that. And then God's be like, ha, 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 no, you didn't. You didn't get away with it. You never repented of it after. Actually, you know what I'm saying? You slept with somebody else's wife and did all this and that. Never even repented on it. Just went on with your life like it's all cool. Just ruined a whole household. And God said, whoever destroys a marriage, he would not go unpunished. So you you, you live your whole life thinking you went unpunished. And with none repentance. You went by the concept of somebody gonna do it, or I might as well do it too. If somebody, if, if I don't do it, somebody's gonna do it. So you did it, and then you never repented, and then you found yourself in the judgment seat, and God's like, ha ha, I told you don't get away with nothing. Oh, oh really? So be careful out there, people. Now, there's evil people out here, but that's what that's evil that resides in you. You would be careful about that. I tell people all the time, sometimes when you say deliver us from evil, you may be looking in the mirror when you say deliver us from evil, Lord Jesus. And you need to be looking straight in the mirror. Because <laughs> there's some evil that need to get out of you. You understand? That's why you need discernment, people. The Bible even tells us not to trust in our own heart. So if the Bible tells us not to trust in our own heart, what makes you think I'm supposed to trust in somebody else? I trust no one but God. I only trust myself. I love everybody. But I trust no one. None. None. You can say it all you want. I didn't, every time I, I didn't let myself down and start trusting in people, no matter who they are, when I start putting more trust in them, then God, God's like, I told you. I told you. <laughs> oh, you you trust your wife more than you trust me, huh? I told you. You trust your husband more than you trust me, huh? I told you. You trust your friends more than you trust me. I told you. Then I showed you. So guess what? Being a Christian sometimes leads to a lonely life. Now, I've been watching the, the old days and the apostles and I was looking at the watching the old days. <laughs> I guess I'm watching it when I read it. And I've been like, man, oh, man, they were so close. You know, the Christians and stuff like that. They, they got along so well. You know, I'd be like, golly, boy. And even sometimes they had beef. Have you ever watched Paul and Peter? I rebuked him to his face. You know, I was like, wow, good Lord. Even even Christians, even apostles have arguments. No, I want Paul to go. No, I want Barnabas. No, 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 no. He's going with you. <laughs> you see, people, people think that Christians don't have arguments and stuff. Man, come on. Are you a human being? You might have one among a thousand that don't let nothing bother them. But the majority of us, we're going to have some arguments sometime. But he said, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Right? So try to go to sleep with a, a peaceful heart. Then you might not be tossing and turning. And I'm going to end you with this last saying, people. You know, a lot of y'all are like, I'm a night person. I like this. Let me, I'm going to tell you a scary line right quick. The Bible says, some people can't sleep unless they're done either. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times why you can't sleep at night it ain't because God is keeping you up it's because the evil you have done is keeping you wide awake <laughs> wide awake that evil can't even suffer you to sleep and you looking at your husband or your wife like looking at him just sleeping like a baby <laughs> and, you, and, and you're not realizing how evil you are right now and they just sleeping like a baby that's all I got for y'all people. Just a little real talk for you right now. This how I'm gonna tell you, this is how you're gonna talk to most people. I'm just telling you. I'm trying to give you examples. You're not gonna be up there and uh, about to lose your breath preaching. You're gonna be talking just like you talk to anybody else. That's how you're gonna be breaking down the word majority of the time. Have a blessed day, people.